Siri, the company that has been releasing budget anamorphic lenses for APS-C censored cameras over the last year or so, has just released this lens, which is a brand new one. It's a 24 millimeter f2.8. They were generous enough to send me this thing for review. Now I have reviewed their first lens, which was a 50 millimeter f1.8, and their second lens, a 35 millimeter f1.8, and this is the third lens to the series. It is a 24 millimeter. So, first things first, let's see how it comes packaged. The lens comes in a nice white box with a picture of the lens on the front. Opening it up, you will find there is a little white box that says accessories. Inside of that box, you get a microfiber cloth pouch for the lens itself, a user guide, and a service card. Just like their first two lenses, this one comes vacuum sealed as well. The lens comes with a plastic front lens cap and a plastic rear lens cap. The first thing that I immediately noticed is it's bigger than the other two releases from Siri, and it is heavy. I'm talking almost 800 grams. It's almost two full pounds. So there's a lot of metal and a lot of glass built into this thing. This one is specifically for E-mount. However, there are a bunch of other mounts available. There are no electronic connections here because this is a manual focus only lens. Moving forward from the mount, you have a nice de-clicked aperture control ring. It is very smooth, has a nice bit of resistance to it. Obviously it goes from f2.8 all the way down to f16. In front of that, you have a very buttery smooth focus ring that rotates a full 180 degrees, if not a little bit more. It is very light to the touch, very easy to turn, and it is so, so smooth. This is one thing that Siri definitely does right, and that is focus rings. Beyond that, looking at the side of the lens, you have a little 24 indicator Siri branded logo, and then at the top, you have anamorphic 1.33x, Siri brand again and 24 millimeter f2.8. Taking a look at the very front of the lens, you have that very unique square cutout. Siri branded on the top. Minimum focusing distance on this lens is 0.6 of a meter or just about two feet. A 72 millimeter filter thread and again anamorphic 1.33x at the bottom. It has that very nice blue ring that is unique to Siri at this point. It's kind of that light blue color and it matches the rest of the set. Overall, it is a very solid feeling, solidly built lens. There's nothing to complain about from the standpoint of build quality. This lens features 13 elements in 10 groups and an eight bladed aperture. This thing is awesome and when you mount it on your camera, such as the A6100 here, you get a sense of the weight. It weighs more than the camera body itself. It's like attaching a two pound dumbbell to the front of your camera using duct tape. Try that at home. That's kind of the effect that you get. Very front heavy. There's a lot of glass, a lot of metal. Now, why would you pick up an anamorphic lens? Well, if you guys don't already know what an anamorphic lens does is it basically squeezes an image and then it records or you take photos or you take video with a squeezed image. Then when you go to edit it, you unsqueeze it and it gives you a natural uh, 2.4 to 1 ratio, that kind of wide cinematic look without having to add the black bars on the top of the bottom. So in theory, the benefit of this is you get higher resolution video. So if you are on a high budget production film set, you are getting the most out of your camera because every single pixel is accounted for in the final film versus you're blocking off huge sections of what your lens and what your camera sees with a typical a spherical lens. So uh, this lens I did take out and I did shoot a couple of sample videos uh, just to see what it is capable of and what it looks like. So let's take a look at those now.
So that is it for the sample videos with this lens. It is very nice to use. The focus ring is super duper light to turn. I was even able to use it on my gimbal without interrupting my gimbal at all, I mean, without even shaking the gimbal. That's how smooth and how nice it is to turn. It is a heavy lens, but it is built like a tank. As far as image quality is concerned, most people are probably not gonna be buying an anamorphic lens such as this one for photography. So its intent is really not to be the sharpest lens out there. However, I found just taking a couple of snapshots, it is decently sharp in the center and it does give you a little bit of creamy background bouquet. I'll repeat what I said in my other video where I reviewed the 50 millimeter and the 35 millimeter. There are three reasons why people buy anamorphic lenses. Number one, it gives you that aspect ratio straight out of the camera. You don't have to add any boxes, top and bottom. You get better resolution that way, something that I already mentioned. Number two, you get crazy flaring. The horizontal blue lines. Now, if you guys pay attention to movies, these things come up all the time. I used to never pay attention to them, but now ever since I've been using anamorphic lenses off and on here and there, I notice it all the time. You can definitely tell when a film producer is using an anamorphic lens in a shot. And so this lens definitely does produce some crazy horizontal lines of blue light. The third reason why people like anamorphic lenses is the bokeh. With a normal circular lens, you get circular bokeh balls. With an anamorphic lens, you get oval shaped bokeh balls. And this one certainly does have a little bit of bokeh, but not to the extent that we saw on the 35 millimeter and on the 50 millimeter. As far as my overall opinion of this lens and my thoughts as far as using all three of them, I'd say it's an excellent set if you are a budget filmmaker. If you're looking to just take a lens and shoot photographs with it, this is not the lens for you. You really have to know what you're getting yourself into when it comes to buying anamorphic lenses. You're looking for the bokeh, the flaring, and that factor of 2.4 to 1. I'm a little bit disappointed that they did not include the focus ring circles like they did with the 35 millimeter. I figured that if you are planning on using a lens such as this one on a gimbal, such as what I did with the samples, uh, you really want to get that set of gears. That way you can just adjust it on the fly on the gimbal. The other thing that I noticed is obviously this lens is an f2.8 versus f1.8. So you do lose a lot of light collection, unfortunately. And that creates for um, some challenges when you are dealing with low light situations. f2.8 is definitely not as good as f1.8 when it comes to low light. But I understand the limitations of the size and the fact that creating a super wide anamorphic lens is a challenge. I mean, this is a 24 millimeter, but when you actually look at what you are seeing on your screen, it's not really a 24 millimeter. Uh, you'd have to shoot with something like a 16 millimeter and then crop the top and the bottom to get that same perspective. If you're a budget conscious filmmaker, this trio of lenses from Siri makes a whole lot of sense if you are looking for that anamorphic look. It's exciting to see how quickly they are coming out with these lenses. I mean, over the course of a year, maybe two years total, they've come out with three amazing lenses. And I'm sure in the future, they are going to be adding to this collection. I hope an 85 millimeter lens comes out. That would be awesome. But make it f1.8, please, Siri. Make it f1.8. That is going to be it for my review of this lens. As usual, if you guys are interested in checking it out and or buying it, I didn't even mention price. Super early bird price is $749, so $750, which is a lot of money for a lens, but not a lot of money for an anamorphic lens. I only recommend it to those of you who are budget filmmakers and you are looking for something uh, that is anamorphic and to take your filmmaking to the next level. Uh, so definitely links will be down below. As the prices change, you'll see those prices fluctuate. So right now, when I checked this morning, I think there were uh, 40 spots or so available in that super early bird special. And then the price keeps going up. Uh, eventually this thing is gonna cost $1,000. A lot of you have been reaching out to me about the Tamron 17 to 70 F2.8. I know I pre-ordered it months ago. I'm still waiting for my copy to arrive. I will be reviewing that shortly. So if you aren't subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you guys for all of your likes, all of your comments and your support. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.